Might as well start. Uh, thank you for being here today. Um, we're going to go over uh, semantic searches in Cassandra, uh, how it can be done today uh, with uh, Cassandra 4, um, and as well as how we can use it in the future with the new versions, uh, utilizing open source Cassandra uh, with the Apache license, free license to use Cassandra. We'll go over the basics of semantic searches. Uh, vector databases, vectors, and later we'll have a demo of both the current versions uh, of Cassandra uh, with, uh, uh, with uh, open search, without open search, as well as with uh, the new version coming out uh, with Cassandra 5. So I am Bassam Shaheen, and with me here is Morilu Miranda. We're from uh, NetApp. Uh, we're part of the Insta cluster group within NetApp. So we'll start with vector databases. The, the key here is that they enable AI and NLP applications to process large uh, scales of data. Right? Uh, they the, uh, utilize uh, various types of information encompassing unstructured data, whether it is uh, text documents, rich media, audio files, video files, and also structured data, uh, such as uh, geospatial, tables, graphs, and so on and so forth. So we're able to handle these diverse documents in vector databases. Um, unlike traditional uh, databases, vector databases are capable of high dimensional data efficiency. Uh, they can, can perform similarity searches, involve similar points in large data sets based on a query vector. Um, embeddings uh, in the, or, or uh, yeah, embeddings are created when, uh, for word possessing similar meanings and often occurring together uh, with similar context, so there is a relation between them. Um, and these embeddings are vectors created with a high dimensional space that captures the aspects uh, of the word's meaning. And so we'll be going over a um, description of what we're going to do and what the benefits or detriments of using existing versions. Um, as well as, as the demo. So we'll start with uh, Cassandra 4. So in Cassandra 4, you can store vector data in the database, but there is no specific type for vectors. So in essence, if an application wants to access the vectors, we're having to, to perform a full table scan every time you want to query the data. The problem with that is uh, with data science, um, the, the, the AI, NLP, you're dealing with large sets of data, and the application is going to have to load all the full tables data into memory, and the limitation on memory could be a problem down the line. Also, the performance is not ideal because having to do a full table scan every time you're trying to get this data. So the approach to do this in currently in Cassandra 4 is you have a data processor that downloads the data model as well as loads the uh, file that you want to vectorize. The data processor will vectorize the data based on the model and then stores it in Cassandra in a non-vector column, uh, text or something else. The tool to run a query, the data processor will do a full table scan, do the ranking of the matches, and then present it to the customer. The, all the workload of the ranking is being done on the application and therefore it's uh, too, too burdensome on and may issues have issues with memory and performance. So today with Cassandra 4, uh, we have another option is to add yet another great open source uh, tool, which is Open Search, for indexing of vector data. So Open Search um, has a plugin that allows for um, nearest neighbor searches of your data, um, as well as being able to store data that will uh, enable us to look up the values from Cassandra and provide the, uh, the uh, feedback to the, of the query. So the flow here is a bit different than what we saw earlier. So the first step is similar. You have a data processor that's going to go through and pick up uh, the data model and the PDF file. It will vectorize the data, so it will create vectors based on a document ID as well as a paragraph ID. In open search, the vector data, as well as the uh, document ID and paragraph ID are stored there in the index. Cassandra will have other data related to the document 
and the, the paragraph in Cassandra as metadata. So when, and, and uh, from the other side of the um, equation, you have queries coming against this environment. The data processor will first look at the open search, run the uh, NLP query against the index, get the vectors that match based on those vectors and not the full data set, just those vectors. We'll have the document ID as well as the paragraph ID that can be used to retrieve data from Cassandra. So this will um, shift the load of doing the, the matches rankings to open search. It will uh, reduce the need to do back uh, to do uh, a full full scan, so the application not loaded with too much data, and you have the benefit of having Cassandra with the fast data storage and retrieval. So now I hand it over to Merlo to do a demo of how we are able to show that. All right. So in this, we will have two demos today. The first one will be the, the showing what we can achieve with Cassandra four. Uh, next one, we are going to show. The, an evolution of this. Um, this is. Be, this, I'm going to do this on a on a notebook. I preloaded some some things here in order to not spend too much time uh, during this demo. But basically, um, I had to define some functions here to extract uh, text from documents. We are looking for a use case that is. People are looking a lot. Uh, on these nowadays, after uh, the, the, that AI hype that we got after uh, ChatGPT, and this is the base of that. So you can have your knowledge base on some folder, for example, or some I don't know data lake, whatever, and get your data into a database and be able to look for for things there, uh, to information there. This is the part of the pipeline where you can read your data and search for your data. And if you want in the, in the end of the pipeline or in the beginning, um, you can have a, a, an LLM system to do some more complex um, data management or get information in a different way or, my, or, or a smarter way. Okay, so uh, for the purpose of this demo, we are using fast text model to convert text into embeddings. So in order to do a vector search, you need to have vectors. And this is um, a pre-trained model that was um, produced by, by Facebook research team. And this is uh, free. You can download it and use it. This took like eight minutes just to load. So that's why I said I preloaded some, some parts of the notebook. Otherwise, we won't have time here. Um, and the first part of, of, those, of this notebook is uh, we have just functions to get the documents from the folder and index this. So, uh, there are functions here to get PDF, a PDF file, for example, extract the text and, and, and then convert this into embeddings. Also for PowerPoint files, Word, um, Excel files as well. So those were the, 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 the user cases we used and we tried here. We can extend this to other file types. Of course, you need to create functions for that. So those, those functions, all those, those functions are uh, meant for that. And then we have the main function here, which is getting the text after the extraction from the document and converting this into embeddings using this model. All right. So proceeding. Um, here, we are going to connect to Cassandra 4. Load the variable with the key space name. I'm not going to run that because I already have the, the selector created and also documents there. But what is important to note here on Cassandra 4, we don't have vectors. We don't have a vector data type. So we are going to use a list of floats to store the vectors. All right. And this is a function to insert the data. A simple function, like with an insert, we are going to add the, the file ID. We are going to get the file and, chunk, uh, and get chunks of the file. So we are splitting paragraphs. So each paragraph will have a unique ID as well. Then we are going to store the file name, the embeddings that we created with the, the fast text, the clear text uh, related to that embedding, and then the date uh, that it was created. All right, so in this part, we are passing a file pass. This is a Cassandra best practice document. 
we are going to call the function to extract the text from the PDF, convert it into a, um, a list of paragraphs with embeddings, and the structure of this list is, is here, a little bit up. Okay, so each item of this list will have the file ID, the paragraph ID, file name, path, text, um, of the, the declared text of, of the paragraph, page number, in, the, in PDFs this makes sense, so on Excel this like is going to store the, the name of the sheet, and the embeddings, all right? Having this list, we can call the function to insert on, uh, in Cassandra, the function I just showed here on the top. For that file, we produced 302 paragraphs. Um, we set it all, every, everything in Cassandra, and then we get the, the part where we need to search. And here is the, is the main problem when you're just using Cassandra 4 with this approach. We need to load all the table. So we did a full table scan here. As you can see, there is no where. So we are just loading the whole table into memory. Um, we are loading the ID, the paragraph ID, and the embeddings and the text. And afterwards, we are going to use this cosine similarity function, which is available um, on this Python library. And we are doing the similarity comparison in Python. So the weight of this processing is going to the data processor here. So we need to load everything into memory. And if you have a very huge table, this is going to be eff effective. So it's not, this may not be a good idea if you have a lot of, lots of data. Anyway, this works. And here, for example, if I look for cluster, this is going to, I don't know if this, the size is good, but you can see um, this found some sentences with cluster here, uh, clusters. So the, diff, the, the, the main thing with the embeddings is that you are not looking for a single word. This is putting the word into a context and looking for sim similar words around that. So for example, California and San Jose, this would like relate to things and, and return a text. Of course, the similarity score would be different. If you look for San Jose, for example, uh, and you have a text with San Jose, the rate would be higher than if you find California in, in the middle of the text. Let me go back here. All right, so this is the way to do that with Cassandra, one of the ways to do that with Cassandra 4 only. Uh, so this is still possible. It's not ideal. Uh, with smaller data sets, this might work depending on your use case. However, you have an, another way and a more effective way, like Bassan said, uh, which is using Cassandra 4 and OpenSearch. So I'm going to connect to OpenSearch here and I previously created um, an index using the KNN vector. This is a plugin, actually, a KNN plugin. Uh, and, then, and this, uh, this index is having three fields, basically, three properties. One is the file ID, another one is the paragraph ID, and then we have the embeddings on a KNN vector type. I need to put that dimension. For this case, the dimension is 300. And having that, we can insert all those embeddings in, in OpenSearch. As I, as I showed, I just said that three uh, properties here, which, which are the, the ideas to identify, uh, to basically to cross the information between Cassandra and OpenSearch. And if I do the same search here, where is this? If I do the same search, like look for a cluster, this is what we are going to have, just IDs and a similarity score. And as I have the rest of the metadata in Cassandra, I can use those uh, unique IDs to go to Cassandra, like you're seeing here, and query for the file ID and paragraph ID, so I can enrich my data based on Cassandra. So I, I can have um, the similarity score got from OpenSearch, but I can also have all the other information, all the metadata that is stored in Cassandra. So I have the text, the clear text, I have the file path, so if I want, I can, I can go and grab the file. Uh, and from this point on, you can insert a, an LLM and, and get your te text and provide a, like a, a nice sensor for, for the end user. Okay. Um, yeah, that's it for the first demo. I will give it back to Bassam now. 
Thank you. So, you know, right, right now, Cassandra 4 is what's out um, and released. So if you have a need to uh, do NLP or semantic search, um, I guess Cassandra is available, but we recommend that you use a tool like OpenSearch as well to be able to, to perform this action. The great news is that there's um, recently released is Cassandra 5 and um, uh, Alpha Cassandra 5 uh, beta version. Uh, we are looking at the first quarter of next year for Cassandra 5 to be publicly available for use. And embedded in this uh, new version of Cassandra are some features which will uh, negate the need to use open search. So you just use the one tool, which is Cassandra 5. I'm just kind of curious, how many people here are currently using Cassandra? Okay. And how many are in the AI, are here for the AI portion? Okay, cool, thank you. So then I think this will, this will be useful so you can see how it can be easily done um, in one place. So the benefits of uh, Cassandra is that now it is able to um, store vectors. So there's a new data type introduced in Cassandra 5 uh, that is a vector data type. Um, it, it allows uh, running functions against that column of both cosine, Euclidean, uh, dot uh, product, and you know, several functions. Um, it also uses the approximate near, uh, nearest neighbor function uh, against the data for searching. So you're getting the, the similarity searches. And uh, the way that this data is indexed is using the new storage attached index that's being introduced also as part of Cassandra 5. So the, f uh, the flow gets simplified again back uh, without having the open search in there. So where the first step is similar in the sense that we're getting the data model, we're getting the document, running the document through the data model, uh, generating the vectors, then storing the, both the metadata and the vector data in Cassandra. Um, the vectors is, is in a vector data, data type column, uh, which then makes it easier for the data processor at the end to do a search against Cassandra on the data vector column and retrieve all the data in the one query. So again, back to you. Yeah. All right, so we are going to the second demo. And on this second one, Cassandra plays a different role here. So before Cassandra was merely a, like a metadata uh, store. And now we can have, um, we can have a more uh, power from Cassandra because we have the vector data type on Cassandra 5. So looking to straight to the, to the path, let me just connect to Cassandra 5 here, make sure connection is up. Difference between Cassandra 4 and 5 is this data type here, one of those. So you have a vector data type, this is a float, and then I need to put the dimension of the, the vector, which is matching with the fast text again. All the other functions are the same. So to extract the, the data, convert this, the, the data into embeddings, and etc., etc., this is all the same. Difference here is the vector data type, and then we need to create uh, an SAI index on the column in order to be able to search uh, for similarity. As we are still dealing with uh, uh, not, not a final version of Cassandra, we are getting this warning saying that ANN is still in, in preview. All right. Um, the path for inserted data is the same as well as the other demo. Same stuff. And then we have the search part. And this is much simpler than before because we can do everything in Cassandra now. And this is like a simple select query where we can look for, um, for a text. So this function receives a text, okay? Convert this into a 10 embeddings, which is going to be sent to this, set, to this function here. Um, this, is the, this, is, this will be an array of, of, uh, of floats, like before, or like on the other demo. And this query we have, we'll be using the, cos the similar cosine function. This is a native Cassandra 5 function that is going to return the similarity score um, of each row. And then we can order the rows by the similarity as well using this syntax. So going straight to the, to the point here, if you want to search again for cluster, for example, we will have from Cassandra the similarity index that, and all the metadata basically. So we can get to whatever we want here. In this case, I got the text. And this is wrong. This wouldn't be text. This is like the file name. 
and, and here is the path of the file. So we could get everything directly from Cassandra. So you don't have the need to like deploy an open search uh, or process everything on your, on your data processor because Cassandra is able to compare, get a similar text, return it to you. And so you have a repository and also a smart part where you can get the similar data uh, from our database. You can like, just to show we are not just looking for a cluster. We can look for place, for example, and this is looking for, even if there is no place words there, this is going to look for a similar word um, in, in the file. Of course, the similarity score is lower than before, but you still have uh, the list here. All right, so Bassam, I don't know if you want yeah. to talk about yeah, that yeah. now. Um, go to the slide. And sure, so uh, if I go to this slide, just uh, briefly here. Um, so th thank you for the demo. Um, yeah, this, um, we're both part of, uh, and mentioned earlier, part of Insta. Is that showing the? No. Um, we're part of uh, Insta cluster, which is a uh, part of NetApp as well. Um, we are a company that provides managed service for multiple open source projects, including uh, Cassandra, OpenSearch, Kafka, Redis. You're able to deploy uh, clusters within minutes use on either the cloud, multiple clouds, or you can deploy it on-prem. Uh, for this demo, we were able to use uh, the both OpenSearch and Cassandra on our managed platform. Easy to deploy, test, and then when we're done, we can then remove it. So uh, we provide support for all these projects as well. So if you're already uh, deployed in your environment and you're looking for support, we provide that 24 by 7 on production systems, uh, as well as uh, consulting for implementations and guidance and uh, reviews. So um, to go back to... So this is what it looks like is if you log into the console, uh, you'll see I've uh, deployed Cassandra 4, Cassandra 5, um, as well as an open search cluster. To create a cluster is uh, straightforward. Pick the technology you want and just uh, put in a name for a cluster. Uh, let's, let's go with the trying to create a Cassandra cluster. Hit next. Uh, you can choose a version of Cassandra you wish to deploy. You have uh, from three and uh, five right now is uh, alpha is, is in beta availability, but beta will be available for you to use soon as well. Um, and uh, hit next, pick the uh, region where you want to deploy in AWS, for example, the node type, you can change that as, uh, to your needs, hit next, and within five minutes, you'll have a cluster created. You can see the cost up front of what it, what it takes. So um, we'll click that off. So really, that's, uh, that's kind of our presentation. I want to open up uh, uh, for any questions you may have about this process. Sure. Go ahead, please. Oh, yeah. So I'm, I'm a little bit unclear. Maybe you can clarify for me. In this 5.0 version, we took all those PDF documents, we vectorized it, we just we parsed it, and we created the embedding. Mm -hmm. And then that was the, what populated the vector database. But in the first one, in the 4.0, mm -hmm. you actually use a large language model. And then, and then what did you do there? Did you take a tokenizer? No. For it, how did you, what was the difference there? For, for both, we, we use fast text. To get the text and convert it to vectors, okay? Um, when you convert that, do you use a tokenizer, the Bronx, which is LLM, or did you? No, 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 not LLM. I use it uh, like a, a FSX, which is a, a model, pre trained model to convert text into vectors with, with some meaning, okay? So the main difference uh, is on how Cassandra is storing the data. For Cassandra what, 4, sorry. You, you, you need a model to, to like... Because the model requires you to train, and mm -hmm. then you do inference, right? Yes, yes, so but... Here you're just taking text, and then you're just mm -hmm. doing embedding the time. Yeah, but in order to, to, to do a similarity search, you need to have all the text uh, converted to embeddings on the same way. So that model uh, is a training model with thousands of words. Uh, like, it's a very high model. But is and that after the fact, after you've already created embedding, mm -hmm. then when you no, 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 no. 
the model is just used to convert the text into embeddings. After that, the model is useless, not useless because every time you need to search for something, you need to get the text you want to search and convert to embeddings using the same model you use it to insert in the database, okay? Um, and this is the difference here. So this is the clear text uh, view of the model, clear text in Cassandra 4. So this is what the model is producing. So the text is here, this is the text, and this text was converted into this, okay? This is a list of floats. In Cassandra 5, as we have a vector data type, this is how the vector looked like in Cassandra. Okay, so this is uh, an excel. Yeah. yeah. So in, in this case, so it's, it's the data model that does that, uh, finds the similarities between words, uh, takes away the, uh, the comp for comparisons between whether it has a tick mark or not, creates a vector data. Now that vector data is stored in Cassandra with Cassandra 4. You are uh, not uh, querying that data to do similarity searches, you're just storing the data. Uh, the load comes on the application when you're trying to query the data, it's going to pull the full set of data as well as the vectors the application will perform the search against the vectors to pull the data that's needed and then present you with a ranking of a matching, matching docu uh, documents. Yeah, that's the main difference. The part yeah. of comparing the data for Cassandra 4 should be done on your side. For Cassandra 5, Cassandra does that for you. Okay, so you get rid of, of yeah. that processing power, or processing part, because Cassandra 5 can do that for you. Yeah. And it turn the list with, with everything, with the, the, the score and, and et cetera, ordered. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. So uh, as an intermediate step, if you are using Cassandra 4, it cannot move to Cassandra 5, you can then leverage open search to handle the similarity searches using the indexing with the Canon plugin. Yes. Um, I mean, there are vector, other vector databases out there where, I, yeah, I, I've kind of been playing around with uh, Cassandra uh, piece of it, so I don't know if maybe you have uh, an answer for that. But. No, for, for example, we are using OpenSearch to, to, to do the, yep. to complement Cassandra 4. So OpenSearch is only one of the options you, you have out there. So yeah. the, the, the good news is just that Cassandra 5 uh, we'll have that, and so it's another option we'll have, and, and you don't need to deploy another service and pay for it, yeah. because everything is in the same place. And we like that because you, you, you still got the, the free software that you're using. Um, it's very well known for fast writes and uh, reads, so you're leveraging all the benefits and scalability of uh, Cassandra, so those are all great benefits, and now you have the added benefit of you being able to store and retrieve vector data, as we you know, find that's a very good combination. All right. Cool. No other questions. Well, thank you for coming. Appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of the summer. Thank you. Thank you.